Hey guys, Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. And this is my second video in my 50-50 tips and tricks series. And what do I mean by that? Well, it means that 50% of the people may have actually already heard this before and might have known about this, but the other 50% probably haven't. And those folks are likely newbies. And today's tip is, is shooting wide open ruining your images? Now, if you're curious to understand what I mean by that, stick around and I'll explain. Before we get started with this video, I want you to take a look at this series of professional portraits and I want you to tell me what all these images have in common. Ready? Go. After taking a look at those images, I think you'd agree that they're all pretty sharp and the backgrounds had a really blurry background or a very shallow depth of field. So have you figured out what they all have in common? No, not yet? Well, let me tell you, none of them were shot wide open with really wide aperture glass. When I first got into photography, I was obsessed with blurry backgrounds. And the best way to achieve a blurry background was buying the widest aperture lens that I could afford. That typically meant f1.4 for a prime or f2.8 for a zoom. I went crazy trying to find the widest aperture lenses that I could find. I really wanted to blur that background. I had it in my head that blurry backgrounds made me look more professional, made my images appear to be more pro-like, and it just seemed to certify my place as a professional photographer in the eyes of people who didn't have super wide aperture lenses. But over time, I kind of learned a couple of things. First and foremost, this right here, this is the Sigma 85 millimeter F1.4 art series lens. This is a phenomenal wide aperture lens. And people who buy these things, you'll often hear them say things like this. You buy an F1.4 lens to shoot it at F1.4. That may be true, maybe you do do that. Or number two, I only shoot wide open. I hear that all the time as well. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with shooting wide open. But what I discovered is that if you, for example, utilize single point autofocus, where you set this up, you press the, you press the focus button or the shutter button if you have it attached to the focus. I, I separate, I use the back button for back button AF. When you do a single point AF, you focus, typically you're focusing on the person's eye, the eye that's closest to the camera, typically, but not always. That's usually what you do. And you're there. But you can imagine at f1.4 the three-dimensional space of what's in focus is about this wide okay and as you take that get set and get that focal plane or that focal point set you might have a tendency to do this or this when you're taking the picture without even realizing it and what does that mean well it means that that second that you focus on that picture maybe you focused on their eye but as you move forward or move backward maybe the picture ended up focusing on their ear or maybe it was on their nose, or maybe it was at a point just in front of their faces. End result was a blurry image. Now to partially offset that, one of the things you can do is shift to continuous autofocus and keep your hand on the focal button, in my case, back button autofocus, the entire time while I'm taking the picture. That certainly reduces things, but lenses like the Sigma will tend to jackhammer a little bit. And if I take a series of shots, one might be perfect, the next might be a little bit off, the one after that might be a little bit off, whatever. 
The other thing that you want to keep in mind is that your subject might move too, because they might be a little bit nervous and they might be doing this while, you're waiting for, while they're waiting for you to take the picture, because not every client that you work with or every subject that you work with is going to be a professional who's used to getting their picture taken. That's point number one. Point number two about wide aperture lenses. What you'll find, and this is pretty much true across the board, you can, you can go to all the, the lens testing sites, like a good example is Optical Limits, that used to be PhotoZone. They have very in-depth technical analysis of all the lenses and how they perform wide open versus stop down. And what you'll find pretty much across the board is that most lenses are at their weakest op optically when they are wide open. The center performance is generally pretty good, but the edges fall off dramatically. And even the center performance isn't quite as good as the lens if it were stopped down to say f2 in the case of an f1.4 lens or f4 in the case of an f2.8 lens. Now there are plenty of reasons why you want to shoot wide open or if you're outdoors in a big beautiful environment like this then you really don't necessarily want or need to shoot wide open. Oftentimes with my Sigma 85 f1.4 I'm going to shoot at f1.8 or maybe at f2. Because at f1.8 or at f2 I achieve two things. Actually I achieve three things. Number one, I still get an incredibly blurry background, which is obviously very important. Number two, I'm getting a slightly wider depth of field. So if I move a little bit, or if my subject moves a little bit, the plane of focus is still generally wide enough to keep their eye razor sharp. And number three, f1.4 lenses, or frankly any lens, performs better when it's stopped down just a little bit. So if I'm shooting this lens at f1.8 or, f1 or f2, my results are absolutely fantastic. They are so, so sharp, which is great. And I'm still getting an amazingly thin depth of field. So the bottom line is, if you buy an f1.4 lens, you don't necessarily have to shoot it at f1.4 to get an amazing result. And that's my tip for the day. So if you buy an f1.4 lens or even an f1.8 lens, shoot the f1.8 lens at f2 or even f2.2. If you get an f1.4 lens like this, shoot it at f1.8 or at f2, and two things are going to happen. You're going to get more shots in focus, and you're going to get a better result. So there you go. That's my second tip in my 50-50 tips and tricks. I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. If you like videos like this, go ahead and give me a like or better yet, subscribe. And until the next time, happy shooting.